So one of the most common questions I get asked about Antarctica is why is there 24 hours of daylight in the Austral summer season? So I'm a little bit limited in my supplies here, but um, I'm going to try to explain that with my beach ball of the globe um, and a few other things. So there's a few different processes um, that happen to create days, seasons, and years. The first one is uh, pretty easy. It's that the Earth spins, and that's what gives us days. Um, so let's pretend that this chair is the sun, just because I have limited supplies to work with here. So when you have the Earth spinning, when parts of the Earth here face the sun, it's daylight. When the other part of the Earth is pacing away from the sun, that's darkness. So one rotation of this globe um, is a 24-hour cycle where you get parts of the Earth that experience day, then they go away, they experience night. Most people understand that pretty well. Then the second process is that the Earth rotates around the sun. So even though you get you know each day like this, you also have the Earth going all the way around the sun in an orbit, and one full cycle of this is a year. So from wherever the Earth starts at one point to when it gets back to that same point, that creates one year. The third process, though, is that the Earth is actually tilted on its axis. So while you have this rotation that goes on here, it's not quite um, vertical. You have this little tilt, about 23 degrees, this way. And so the Earth is still spinning on a daily basis on this axis where my fingers are pointing, but it's just tilted a little bit towards the sun. And that's, this is actually the process that creates seasons. So when you have this here, you still have you know, days occurring, and then the process of the Earth going all the way around the sun creates a year. But notice here that when you have, so this is Antarctica on my globe, I put a little gold star um, to kind of show you where the South Pole is. So when you have this tilt on the axis, um, the South Pole here is pointing towards the sun. So when you have that space of a day where everything rotates, no matter how many times you rotate it here, the South Pole is always facing towards the sun. So during the austral summer season in Antarctica, austral summer being when the southern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun, you have 24 hours of daylight in the periods that are always facing the sun. So if you get to somewhere like, for instance, Australia, sometimes Australia is pointed towards the sun and sometimes it's pointed away from the sun. So you still get days and night in austral summer in Australia. Um, but the South Pole is always facing, so you have constant daylight. Comparatively, let's go from summer to fall to winter, now you have the northern hemisphere pointed towards the sun. So this is called boreal summer. Boreal is the northern hemisphere, so you have boreal summer when the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun, and austral winter because the southern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun. So now, if you think about that same gold star that I had for Antarctica, even, I mean, during the days that it's turning, so let's pretend that this is June, so Northern Hemisphere is having a nice summer. In June, the South Pole is always facing away from the sun. So no matter how many times the Earth rotates in June, the South Pole is never going to see sunlight. So it's 24 hours of darkness in austral winter. And then the interesting thing, in my opinion, is that when you have spring and fall, there's about like a one to two week period in both March and October, so um, both spring and fall, where the South Pole, so the same little gold star, is just slightly, the, it's just thinly pointed towards the sun just a little. Um, so here it's pointed directly at the sun, but here and here you have that angle. So during those times in March and October, you get this surreal, semi-permanent sunrise sunset where it just looks like the sun is just circling the horizon line over and over again because you're at this angle. And this is something unique to the poles. So um, above and below the polar circles you have this angle and you get this beautiful sunrise sunset. I'll put some photos um, at the end of this video if I can to show you that. 
But the rest of the time, um, you have just the sun creeping up more and more. So the daylight is, the sun is just a little bit over the horizon line. And then here, it's just up in the sky all the time because that gold circle is pointed right towards the sun. Then it starts to dip back down in the sky until you have that sunset that lasts for about a week in Antarctica. And then after that, this gold star doesn't see the light of day again for another six months or so because it's now pointed away from the sun. So these are the three cycles that help to explain um, seasonal patterns. You have days, which is just the spinning. You have years, which is the entire rotation around the sun. And then you have the tilt, which only creates that permanent darkness or permanent um, sunlight above the Arctic Circle and below the Antarctic Circle. But the closer you are towards the poles, so if you're in a place um, like, for instance, in um, Greenland or northern Canada, you'll have really long nights when um, Canada is pointed away from the sun and really long days when it's actually pointed towards the sun. So the equator actually has the same amount of um, daylight and nighttime all year round because the tilt doesn't actually really affect the equator that much because that's everything in the middle. So no matter how you orient it, it's just going to have the same amount of exposure to sun all around the year. But this explains why there's permanent um, sun during Austral summer in Antarctica, which is November to February. And um, after that, it starts to get dark. And, and for the people that overwinter in Antarctica, they have a long a winter season ahead of them after um, Austral sunset, where the sun just won't rise for a couple months again. Um, I only work in the Austral summer season. I'm only here each year, November to February. So it's permanent sun when I'm out all the time. When I live in a tent, I have to kind of block the light because it's just sunny all the time, even when you want to go to sleep. Um, but hopefully that helps to explain um, why you have the seasons and sunrise, sunset patterns in Antarctica.